The fulfillment comes from reaching a balance between what you do for yourself and what you do for others, and I firmly believe that. I mean, you may think that social investment is a big enough mountain to try to, uh, to move, uh, an even bigger mountain uh, for me, and one with which I have a very, uh, you know, very strong uh, sense of mission, uh, is uh, bringing peace to the Middle East. Now, I was kicked out of Egypt, but prior to being kicked out, I'd lived very happily as a member of a Jewish family in an Arab country, and uh, there were Jewish ministers, and uh, there was no anti-Semitism until the creation of the State of Israel in 1948, and then the arrival of, of, of Nasser. Um, there was no real anti-Semitism, no real discrimination against uh, any minority in, uh, in Egypt. And when I left Egypt and got to know Israel, and of course, as life will have it, uh, I married an Israeli, and uh, her father was one of the pioneers of, of the country and the commander of uh, the Exodus, uh, Yossi uh, Harel. I began to understand both sides of this issue. I'd, I discussed it with Sir Harry Solomon, who is a very close friend, and we came to the conclusion that relying just on politics to provide the solution was not going to work. If you want to resolve a conflict, you need a triple helix. You certainly need political negotiation, you need security, and you need economics. And you may need media support on top of it, but at least a triple helix. And so we created in 2003 the Portland Trust to work on the economic drivers of peace. And we stay out of the political arena, except to the extent that we need political approvals uh, for the projects uh, that uh, we try to encourage. And we work on the Palestinian side through an office in Ramallah, which has been there for more than five years now, on developing the Palestinian private sector. Private sector employment on the Palestinian side is two thirds of the population, of the working population on the West Bank. It's less than a third in Gaza. When you can begin to plan your future and the future of your children and you have something to protect, you're in a much better frame of mind for emotional compromises. And on the Israeli side, we've worked to relieve poverty, initially through big microfinance programs and now through social impact bonds, social investment bank and, uh, and, and so on. We're eight years into the job. You can see the result on the ground. And I believe that uh, many other conflict um, arenas uh, need to take this economic um, dimension into consideration. It's amazing how much the private sector can do if it's connected to the capital markets outside, if it has um, access to expertise outside. I would encourage you all uh, to go to look on Google Earth at Rawabi, which is a new city of 5,000 homes, many of them affordable homes. It's the first city in Palestine for thousands of years. And uh, we backed the entrepreneur, an outstanding entrepreneur called Bashar Masri, uh, who was the landowner, Palestinian entrepreneur. He's raised the capital. We've helped him along the way. We helped fund the initial uh, urban plan for the city. We helped obtain approval from the Palestinian government as well as the Israeli government. And I think economics can really play an important part when political negotiations aren't making progress. They give momentum for optimism and they give momentum for moderation. And then at some stage when the kaleidoscope of the Middle East turns again and the pattern is rearranged, the opportunity will arise to move forward on the political track. I'm Ronald Cohen, and you're watching Epiphany.